Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 183. As always, I'm your host, James Shotwell, and it is great to be with you again. I woke up this morning, the day before Halloween 2019, and I saw something absolutely horrifying outside my bedroom window. Much to my surprise, there were these little white flakes falling from the sky, and then they got heavier, and they got thicker, and I realized winter is definitely coming. I tried to fight this sensation for a while, I've been thinking about it for a bit, but the weather has been nice here in the Midwest. That is, until today, when I realized that winter is coming, there's nothing we can do to stop it, so we might as well just keep putting out quality content to keep you company. My guest this episode of the show is none other than Justin Furstenfeld, the vocalist and founding member of Blue October, who are currently touring the United States in support of what I believe is their ninth studio album, and will soon release a documentary about the last decade, well, actually their entire career, as a band. Now, I sat down with Justin earlier in October in Grand Rapids, Michigan, aboard the band's tour bus, and we discussed everything from the history of the group, their continued success in the world of music, how they've made it through two decades when so many of their peers have fallen apart, what it's like to be on the other side of recovery, going to rehab, drug addiction, family, romance, relationships, fans. We talked about pretty much everything there is to talk about. I try to fit as much of somebody's life and experiences and perspectives into a conversation as possible, and Justin was not afraid to go deep with me. We got into it, and I think you're going to enjoy the outcome. Before we get there, however, I do need to point out a few quick things. Primarily, this episode of Inside Music and all episodes of the show are brought to you by Holix, the industry standard for music promotion. You can sign up for Holix today and promote your music the same way artists like Slipknot, Killswitch Engage, Blink-182, Green Day, Panic at the Disco, and more do by visiting holix.com. That's H-A-U-L-I-X.com. When you go there, sign up, you'll get your first month free courtesy of the show. I also want to encourage you to check us out on YouTube. Just search Music Biz, that's Music B-I-Z, and you will find our channel. And if you haven't seen Blue October yet, or you haven't listened to the band's latest album, get out there and do it. It's maybe the best of their entire career. And after listening to Justin talk about it in this episode of the show, I highly recommend that you go out there and you seek it out. But for right now, the only thing you need to do is sit back, Relax, maybe have a sip of water if you're feeling a little dehydrated, maybe close your eyes if you need to, and just enjoy my conversation with Justin Furstenfeld of Blue October. already did, did introductions before we got on the bus but yeah. how is your how is the week treating you it's like thursday now is it thursday I, yeah it's thursday it's good then it went by quick yeah i feel like it's one of those weeks where i feel like i missed a day yeah i'm like oh it's already thursday well we have we usually have mondays and tuesdays off so i guess we were in monday and tuesday we were in Asheville. so i drove into the mountains and tried to go get some waterfall hiking done so that was good and then tuesday i wrote a new song in the hotel room it was kind of a crack crack hotel room we stay on a budget mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so this hotel room was like what the fuck and so i sat in there and just wrote a song it's a good song it's a good one it's called the weatherman are you the type that is just constantly writing and recording when you're on the road oh yeah are you recording into an actual thing or are you just using like your iphone notes app no we have uh usually we have a uh Usually we have a, uh, a studio in the back mm -hmm. and we record, uh, but we have it backstage now and Great. we record all the ideas. Now, when I go out and do, I have this one act play that I do, this one man play that I do, and I take a bus and I take my engineer and it, the whole bus is a studio. Like we have vocal booths, we have guitar booths, the shower is like a vocal booth. So there's like legit tracking going down for like, the album so it's cool so i'm working on blue october record on the bus and then i i want to uh i want to write a 
a sad, not country album, but I want to write a soundtrack to a dark western, right? Okay. And uh, because these songs that I've written are like so sad and dark, and they could never be Blue October songs. So I just kind of want to write a, a western about a about a cowboy who's killed way too many people, you know. <laughs> Is there room for a slide guitar in there? Oh yeah, you gotta have slide. Guitar. Oh, you gotta have a slide guitar, <laughs> and you gotta you gotta have uh, maybe a lonely harmonica and and a sad fiddle, you know. But it's really dark stuff, like Leonard Cohen kind of style. I've been doing a lot of interviews lately with people that have two plus decades in the music industry. It's like my it's my fascination this year across a bunch of different genres. And so the one question I always kind of start off with is, is it get easier or harder to write songs that you like enough to put out as time goes on easier yeah yeah because for me it's it's easier because back in the day it was all about the young ego you know and when you're in a band back then it's cool and that band's cool but that band's not because that band blew up and they're huge and they're making lots of money so i'm jealous so they're not cool and it still goes on today you know like Imagine Dragons are great guys. They're huge, and they're everybody should be so proud of them. But then you have bands like 1975 who make fun of them and stuff. And it's just like, why? Why? Because you have, like, not number one hits, and they do? Like, come on, just be proud of them. Um, but all the songs back then were written about poor Justin and all the drama he was going through and the sadness. And these days, there's so much more out there, and... I see so much. I mean, getting sober was part of it, but but it's a craft now. There's a reason people get paid to write songs because it's work. It's a craft, and these days I can sit down and say, I'm going to sit in this hotel room from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm going to give myself that time. This is the subject matter. If I need to study on it, I'll go buy books on it and read those books, and then I'll write a song about it. If I want to write a song about a marriage or a friendship or uh, a problem a guy's going through or a buddy's going through. I want him in here so I can talk to him for two hours first. Then I'll go smoke a cigarette on the porch, think about it, and then get to work. And then it, I won't stop till it's done. Because, and that's just so awesome. Yeah. There's something amazing about it. When back in the day, it was roll a joint, have a few glasses of wine. Oh, we didn't score anything else? Damn, all right, well, I guess this will have to do, you know? Yeah. And then it was all about that. And then if you come up with something, it's cool. Or it's mm -hmm. written in a fog. But there's something cool about that, but then there's something so much more present and pure. It's almost like you didn't land strong, Lance Armstrong your way through it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. Like you totally did it from your brain, what you were taught growing up. Yeah. Using your vowels, using your consonants, you know, using thinking it through, thinking it through, planning it, editing it. Me, yeah, editing it. Yeah, not yeah. going with the first idea. That yeah. Comes from I talk about it. My friends and I, I'm really big into stand up comedy. And I always separate. Oh, I like, love it. Comedians and comics. I say a comedian is a person that like writes jokes right. and a comic gets on stage and says funny stuff. Like there's yeah. a difference. And you can tell when somebody's like spent six hours working on something. Oh, totally. We're, I mean, the the one man show that I do, it's, it's a comedy act, yeah. but about such traumatic events like <laughs> okay. everybody laughs the whole time and then you hit them in the face with truth mm -hmm. and they go uh, uh, like almost throw up in their mouth because it's just like i'm not supposed to be laughing at this but oh, he's laughing like, at, oh no he's <laughs> laughing about himself so i guess i can laugh along mm -hmm. but that's the beautiful thing it's taken seven years of doing that show to edit it and make it what it is now and it started with 20 people in the audience thinking I was just weird getting up there talking about all these things. And But it was written monologues and blocking and planned attacks and waiting for the audience. And sometimes they boo me because I said something that I did that they're just like, what the fuck? And you, it's great because yeah. I got a boo. <laughs> oh, because I'm used to people going, oh, these songs are so good. Let me pat you on the back. And these people are like, fuck you. That's bullshit. You shouldn't have done that to her. You know, but that's a beautiful thing about it. I love it. Blocking is the best thing. Oh, or finding imagine. something improvisational and then keeping it because you record everything and then writing it into it and blocking it right. I, I love the idea that I didn't know about the one person show until you just started talking to me about it, which is funny. You've been doing it for so long now. I feel like uh, no, well, I'm prepared. I'll be I'll doing like it, it in your town. I'll come here with it. You'll see it. You guys do seem to play Grand Rapids at least once every year. Yeah. And it's funny because I've always known about it and I've seen the show several times uh, because I know Ray, as, as I already told you. Great guy. 
great guy. Uh, hanging out with him in November next month. He'll probably listen to this, so we're just Tell like, him I said, hey, Ray, I love you. Now. There you go. He's always got such cool hair. <laughs> he does, right? He rolled out there at like <laughs> eight this morning, but that was it. A three-year-old and her mom. No, nope, um, there's a group. It's, I'm so grateful. My life is so, so full of gratitude these days. Um, like I said, it used to be about my ego, and it used to be... Uh, I wrote an album called Any Man in America once, and it was about my divorce and how I was keep being kept from my daughter in a custody battle. That wasn't a cool album. It was an honest album. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a well documented, uncomfortable. I challenge you to listen to that album from start to finish and not go, "Ooh, I need to take a shit," because it is so uncomfortable to listen to. But I was proud because it was, it was a truth to it. But lost a lot of fans on that album because it was poor me, poor blah 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 blah. And then got sober, and then it was just gaining one f supporter back at a time and writing good quality songs, like we were talking about earlier, that aren't self-deprecating, and they're positive, and they're uplifting, and, and they can tap into the sadness. But I, won't, I spent so many years tapping into that negative bullshit about life that, come on, man, like, really? You're going to circle a drain this long? Like, some people don't want to see you drowning for that long before they go, dude, swim! Yeah, swim. You fucking asshole, swim. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, I'm not a musician myself, but I have gone through a divorce in the last couple of years, and I, oh, I clearly remember... Oh, then you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, rem I also remember the day I woke up and I was like, I think I might be getting over this. Like, you, yeah, yeah. you're just like, oh, well, yeah. I should just stop now. Yeah. Like, I feel like... I should stop whining and yeah. get on with my Gotta life. Gotta get on with it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. So... It's not necessarily the most manly thing to write an album about. And it's, you know, but I mean, it's, but I'm proud of it. Yeah. But the fact that now getting through all that and getting through addiction and, and being a, a huge into recovery and sobriety and, and uh, just living good, it's nice to see that instead of there being 300 people out there crying with me in Dallas, there's going to be 6,000 people like laughing and, and cheering on the beauty of life. Tonight there'll be 1,500. So it's just like, what's going on? <laughs> I just got to be good, do the next right thing. Yeah. Don't smoke meth. Hmm. You know, Smart. don't do, you know, don't <laughs> meth. You can't do meth like a gentleman. Yeah. You know, it, it, have you ever met a successful meth head? Mm -mm. Meth heads don't wear suits well. They don't wear suits well. They yeah. don't, they can't bring their brand of meth to a party and say, no. try this flavor. Yeah. You don't have cocktails and meth. It doesn't work. No. It doesn't work. No. You know, so, uh, might be fun at first, but you will end up stupid. <laughs> so, uh, so I just stay good. Do the next right thing. Like literally that's what I do. The next right thing. That's mm. it. And yeah. work hard. That, that clarity of having, I remember clearly having like a thought that was like, uh, cause I've been clean for a little while now. My, oh. I, I can remember now these days I notice when I have the thought where I'm like, is this a good decision or a bad decision? Yeah. I'm about to make a choice yep. that has reparation. Like do I feel like I'm going to shit myself right now yeah. because that's a bad decision. What is the ripple effect of this? Yeah. Like two days from now. I always say, play the tape out, bro. Yeah. Play yeah. the fucking tape out. You Not know, just the immediate choice. Nah, comes I, I haven't had a drink or a drug in seven and a half years. And like every now and then I'll smell wine and I'll be like, God, that'd be so nice to be mm. a normal person and be able to have one glass of wine. Yeah. But then I think, one? Why the mm. fuck would I have one glass of wine? Ah, then I'm like, oh, there's that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'll tell you, I was in the car. My, my partner has been clean for uh, 12 years. We were in the car driving back from Chattanooga to Michigan recently. And it was late at night. We've been in the car for like 10 hours. We were listening to some classic playlist on Spotify. And I, so Sublime or something was on, and I went to hand her my phone or something to pick music, but she was like, for a second there, I thought you were handing me a joint. And she's like, my brain just goes, like, your brain goes back to that, like, oh, yeah. you're just like, oh, yeah, I mean, well, this is what we do when this happens. This like, is what we, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, it's still in there. Yeah. You can't get rid of it. You just got to, like, recognize it and be yeah. like, oh, it's weird. Or right? here's a CD of cocaine while you're driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. You know, just, yeah. <laughs> just do just, it. You know, you know the hand gesture, and oh, your yeah. brain's just like, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Take that. Yeah. Yeah, I know what's next. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's ex Life's so much simpler now, and, and I can actually use every every cell in my body to be a better person and to be a pure, um, they say I'm an artist. I hate to go, I'm an artist, because that's so egotistical. I get to do this for a living, yeah. and I get to create beautiful music and get to infect people with a choice, negativity or positivity. Mm. I choose positivity. 
I choose to inspire them and try to bring them back to nostalgia when I first heard Roy Orbison's crying and I was five and I cried and my mom's like why are you crying and I said I don't know the man sounds sad yeah. you know but that music did it to me you know uh, as it should you know what I'm saying like <laughs> yeah. that's that's or when you first hear, hold a girl's hand and you're listening to Lady in Red, Krista Berg, mm-hmm. you know it's just like wow. I want to do that to people. Yeah, and that's what I get to do every day. So no, that's the high you chase now. That's the high I chase now. It's and nice that, to just have one high that you're yeah, chasing, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it keeps that's it simple. And I, I I get high on life when I when I tell everybody every night I say if you want a better way of living, put your fucking hands in the air, and they all go. <laughs> And it's just thousands of hands, and I'm like, oh, I feel like snapping to a slim gym. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think, and I think now is the time to have that message. I, I've been kicking around. Like, there's two things I feel like are happening in music in a little bit right now. One is that, in general, we've moved past the everyone's sad phase. And yeah. Now it's either very much positivity or people want something angry again. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah where that's, totally. that's what's becoming the thing again. And I'm into both. Yeah. They're both better, I guess, for the most part so yeah. far. Um, and I feel like it, that's part of what is kel- keeping, propelling you guys forward is that like you switched with it. You evolved at the perfect point. Oh God, thank God we did. Because right. I mean... Can you imagine still trying to sell the same thing? No. That's why I don't understand why people do that. It's I just strange. don't get it. Like I grew up on the Smiths and the Cure and and Joy Division and then Johnny Cash and Merle Haggard and Mazzy Starr and and uh, Michael Jackson and Marvin Gaye and then I'm just it's all over the and then Deftones and Marilyn Manson and then it, so uh, I've always evolved with the times so and I'm not a hip hop artist so I'm not going to go try to be Post Malone Post Malone's Post Malone I'm not going to go try to be 21 Pilots they're fucking good at what they do I'm not going to be Kings of Leon because they do what they do so I'm going to stay in my genre of romantic art rock ooh look at that shit that romantic good. art rock and i'm gonna keep writing what they love super serve the people that love me and that's keep writing positive romantic beautiful songs that you can put on and they make you just feel good <laughs> and they can still be sad but they have to have romance to them you know what's something is there anything in the world of Blue October specifically that you haven't gotten to do yet that like you you like you roll around in your head as like an idea you haven't really figured out how to do it for the band yet? Is it a song or a concept? <clears throat> That's a really good question. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite like I've been around for two decades. What haven't I done yet? Kind of thing. It's uh, you know Ale- Alexander looking over the seeing he's conquered every nation and now what do I do? So you do what you want. What haven't you been able to do? I've done everything I want to do as far as um, where we are today like we're, we made a documentary about recovery and, and, and the beauty in the world and the colors that life has we've made thousands of videos I mean we've opened up for Rolling Stones and the Kiss and which is weird because I never was a Kiss fan um, uh, played Jay Leno and all those things we've done all these beautiful things but there's nothing more exciting than being in the studio and having that magic. You know, my big thing is we went to real world studios in Bath, England, where Peter Gabriel owns the studio. And whew, talk about like just this is wow. I would love to write with Peter Gabriel just to sit with him and go, this is this beat I have. Let's do this. And it doesn't ever have to be released. Just yeah. to write with such a badass, <laughs> you know? I, then I'd love to work with producers that I've always enjoyed, like Danger Mouse, um, um, Radiohead's uh, OK Computer. Oh, my God, I just... Nigel Godrich. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'd love to work with, with uh, all kinds of different producers in the world. Um, I'd like to make a, an album like Beck's Sea Change. Okay, okay. Where it's just acoustic, tight, distorted drums, bass line, mandolin, maybe a slide, and really heartfelt, sad, cigarettes after sex meets Beck's Sea sea Change. I want to make an album like that. There you go. But I can't do it yet because I still have to do this positivity and this, (laughs) I gotta do that. But it's coming. Yeah. Maybe that'll be the Western. 
Oh, yeah. Once you you get once you get established and all the positivity is going and stuff, then you can like you gotta you gotta dip back into the sadness to remind people they can't keep running from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe gotta, maybe gotta maybe that. we put out another album and then fucking three months later you just throw out another one and they're like, what the what the fuck <laughs> is that? It's not gonna be like, oh my god, Kendrick Lamar released it. It's no. No, there's going to be 5,000 people out there that see it and go get it. And then 100 after that. That's it. Yeah. But I'm fine with that. Yeah. But well, people yeah. will always be able to go, what is that song? <laughs> and it's just going to be. Yeah, that simple. Nora Jones kind of shit. You ever hear that song? Miriam. Yeah, yeah. You're such a pretty name. Like, wow, that kind of album. Yeah, uh, I dig it. So smooth. That's what I want to do. Almost. Play SNL would be cool. <laughs> but everybody's like, why haven't Rolling Stone written us up? Why haven't we done this? And I'm like, you're doing this for a living. Yeah. Be happy. Who cares? Defin the the, uh, definition of success is having a roof over your head, paying your bills, your kids are healthy, you're smiling, and you're not dead. Tell me about the documentary. I saw a trailer for it. Yeah, I'm super proud it of it. It's cool. And uh, it seems like you, how, how many hours of film did you create to make the documentary? Seven years of film. So I don't even know how thousands much. Thousands of hours. Thousands. Okay. And thousands. what's the final runtime down to right now? Hour and 48 minutes. <laughs> Isn't it great how that works? <laughs> hour and 48 minutes. It was two and a half hours. Oof. It was two and a half hours long. And come on in, Will. It's two and a half hours long. And now it's one hour and 48 minutes. And I'd have to honestly say I'm the most proud of this documentary more than any album I've ever written. Because it's, you know, can I be honest with you? Yeah. I wanted to film a documentary. As soon as I got out of rehab and got sober, I wanted to do it as an insurance policy on me not getting mm. fucked up again. Yeah. Because if the cameras were on Justin Furstenfeld, you're damn sure he's not going to fail. Yeah. But if they're off, I'm well, lying. <laughs> so it was kind of like a weekly piss test. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I get, it. I get it. And it turned into something so much more beautiful. Kids were born. Relationships were reformed. Marriages were put back together right in front of the fucking camera. <laughs> and it was so beautiful because it turned into not just be about Justin and his sobriety. Mm -hmm. Ugh, poor me. It turned into these people in the band that were the ones responsible for lifting him up. Mm -hmm. Matt, our bassist, the one in the red shirt right there, had a child with Down syndrome right after they put me in rehab. And it's just like, that's so much bigger yeah. than my fucking drug problem, <laughs> you fucking cocksucker. You know, my yeah. brother had issues with me that I never even knew, you know, about mm -hmm. having to come into a hotel and hopefully he, I think he might have tried, might have thought I was going to be dead. Yeah. That fucked him up. He had to go to therapy for years, and we fi I found out all this stuff in the documentary. I never fucking knew all this stuff happened, except for little Liam. Yeah. You know, everybody in their whole, everybody had their world, and it ended up not just being about me. It ended up being about everybody's world and how everybody got better together. Mm. And it's such a beautiful film. It's so beautiful. So what are the things that uh, keep you on track these days? Are you, uh, what are you, a mindfulness person? Are you a workout all the time person? What's your... What's mindfulness? Your... Oh, hell yeah. Uh, meditation. I, I'm a stepper. I 12-step it okay. like crazy. Good. Um, <laughs> I work out. Um, I constantly go on hikes four or five miles a day, and, mm -hmm. and I have to be active, um, constantly riding, surround myself with fucking positive people. Like everyone in the band now is don't doesn't do any drugs, doesn't even smoke weed. It's crazy, and that's a direct result of them seeing how the people that are sober act. Yeah, I want that. Why is he in such a good mood? It's you weird. know, yeah, it's really weird. It's weird. It is it is weird when you get a when you get adjusted to just uh, react like a base level reality. When yeah, you're not high anywhere. You're just like, oh. I'd forgotten what this was like. Yeah. I, I thought I was like this other way all the time. And When you first get chills because it rains outside and yeah. you're like, this is nice. And you're like, whoa, yeah. it's not supposed to be nice unless I'm high. Yeah. You know? I can enjoy this song again. Yeah. I'm sober. Wow. <laughs> the Red you remember the Red House Painters? Yeah. That band or mm -hmm. Idaho, that band? Mm -hmm. Listen to those guys sober and I was like, wow. <laughs> this brings me back to seventh grade. Holy shit. Uh, for me, it was the uh, when I could fall in love with the Almond Brothers again. Oh yeah, 
because when you're high and you're like a teenager, that's like amazing. And then when you're sober, you're like, oh, these guys are just really that talented. And they yeah. just like walked up there and ripped it. That was a task and yeah. they completed it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is good memory lane. I um, I'm big on the meditation front as well. I, I always hate to ask people because I feel like they feel awkward. If I like, do you ever do meditation? And they're like, no. And you're like, oh, okay, um, it's yeah. different. How did you get into it? Was it through going to rehab and stuff? Oh yeah, they taught you that mindfulness. Every morning they'd wake you up at six a.m. and take you into the church, and we would do for an hour. You had to be sit there still for an hour. Ugh, it's the hardest thing. It in the was world. so hard. Yeah. coming off meth <laughs> and fucking every other drug and just but at the end of the three months I was there I was like mm. and it's so nice to just sit quiet sometimes it is it, it's so nice but now I'm also like obsessed with like crime TV Ugh, mm. it's too bad <laughs> like forensic files and shit I've watched them all yeah. ID network oh god 2020 dateline shit like that mm. I love it because my dad was a cop Okay. DEA agent. Yeah. And um, I never really paid attention to it until after I got sober. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, that, I wish I would have been mindful when you weren't retired because I would have really loved to have, like, gone along on some of those tri those fucking trips. I always just tell people I like I like shows where people solve stuff. I just want, yeah. Me too. I just want, the, I just want to see you solve the thing. I love mysteries. I want to know how you got from point A to point B. That's all I want. That's yeah. all my entertainment needs to be. That's it. And I'm, plus, I'm a dad. Like, that's the best... <laughs> thing in the world um, and what makes it even better is that I have the most supportive wife in the world and she's like go do your thing mm. I'm going to stay at home with the kids and I'm like thank you because yeah. I've been with a woman who wasn't like that you mm. know oh my god it was hell but now it's it's amazing it is it is weird when you find yourself with a, with a partner who's like uh, they're they're an individual themselves and you're an individual and they're like let's recognize each other's individuality and you're like is this what a, is this? Is this a joke? You know what the best thing I like about my wife is that <laughs> she doesn't need me. Yeah. She would ne she doesn't ever need me. Nope. She just wants me in her life. And mm. that's so hot. Yeah, my partner right now is the same way. If I even if I say make a joke about like, well, I mean, luckily you have me here to help with this thing, she'll be like, Yeah, but I could do the, I could do right, this stuff yeah. without you. Go fuck yourself. And you're like, Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm kinda scared of you, but I'm it's a, hot. Oh I mean, yeah, I like that. <laughs> I'm learning to feel love in a different way now. <laughs> <laughs> but it is yeah. because I truly believe that God put I mean I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I truly believe that God keeps people in my life to remind me of what, how patient I need to be mm -hmm. and then put Sarah in my life my wife to teach me that you can do it on your own exactly. stop being such a pussy yeah stop yeah stop you can <laughs> comfort yourself when you're sad Absolutely. You know? Ooh, yeah. It takes a while to unlearn that behavior. Oh, though. That's shit. That's a hard one. It's a fun uh, one. Oh, a I, one. I'm sad. I need attention. You're 43, Justin. Get over it. Yeah. Reciprocate my feelings. You're like, we live together. What yeah. do I need to do? What do I need to do? Yeah. I'm home with three children. Yeah. You're playing rock and roll star. Yeah. Well, what else do you need from me? I'm here. I think a thousand people cry for you every night, Justin. <laughs> Am I correct? Well, you're right. People come up to you and tell you their life story and how you fixed it. Is right. that enough for you? <laughs> right. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Get this. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, we can suck it up. And mm -hmm. I, there's a, I think every single time I need that attention from her and I don't get it, it teaches me more. Yeah. Because when I really need it, she's there. Mm -hmm. But when I don't really need it and I need to be a big boy, <laughs> she knows to just be like, really? What do you need? What do yeah. you need from me right now mm. with these three kids swarming around me like bees? Yeah, the, the, the difference between the love you want and the love you need. Yeah, Very totally. Very different things. Totally. Yeah. Just, like I said, my wife doesn't need shit from me. <laughs> she just wants to be with me, man. It's a wonderful thing that I like to laugh about with people because I get it. Uh, that's my life as well. It's so awesome. You don't need me whatsoever, but okay. I don't, I don't always get it. Because you've had people that needed you. Yeah. And it makes it hell. And it's made you a person who recognizes, like, when you need somebody, uh, like, I don't need it. Why can't you be home? Why? Oh, I can't even do this for myself. Yeah. And you're uh, like, well, what's my utility if you don't need me to do anything? Right. right. <laughs> I'm just going to go out here and try to make money for our kids. Yeah. I'm Put gonna, them in college. I guess I'll do my own thing. <laughs>
I guess I'll stay busy and make a Western and a documentary yeah. and a fucking, you know. And now I'm going to get weird with my ideas. <laughs> yeah, now I'm kind of bored. I'm going to go make a Western. Yeah, I got to, yeah. Now About I'm a gonna... cowboy who killed too many people. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. what am I? Yeah. I gotta, the good. demons are overwhelming now. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, let me, uh, I know we got to wrap this up. So what, uh, you guys are on tour right now. What's the rest of your 2019 look like? Well, we're finishing the new album. I've heard um, this, yeah. and we're working on it right now, and it's it's amazing. I I love it because it's it's rock and roll again. It's it's um, it's just five guys and really good songs, uh, and I'm just super proud of them. Yeah, it's just like good old, almost like a, a cross between Bruce Springsteen and freaking a dangerous Leonard Cohen with a little Bob Seger. A little, you know, you gotta have those, anytime you start writing a story song, you're like, oh, This might be a little Bob Seger, a little bit, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 going yeah. on a journey, <laughs> growing up, becoming manhood. I yeah, fell into the circle. I was talking to Art from Everclear a couple weeks ago. Oh, and good dude. He was, I brought up, I he was talking about legendary rock acts, and I brought up Seger. And he's like, Dude, I'm on such a fucking Seger kick right now, right? He's like, It's all he's like, You just you hit a point in life where that's what that's, that's your soundtrack, yeah. Seger, Bruce Springsteen, yeah. and uh, <laughs> you know. Dylan and the storytellers, yeah, and then that's that's all there is. It really is all there is. <laughs> Everybody else is just trying to say what they say simpler. Yeah, yeah, trying to find their own version. You know, and it's fine. Yeah, you recognize it, and then you're just like, I guess that's just life now. It's yeah, cool. It is. Yeah, maybe worse maybe things. one day there'll be a, another band that comes out, and uh, I thought Kings of Leon was going to do it. You know, go, yeah, it go seemed deep, like it for a minute there. Go deep with their stuff and really come out with some. You know, maybe they will still. Yeah, they write good songs. But I thought they were for a while, you know, just that you somebody fucked me up. I loved that song. That whole album was sick. It was such a perfectly written song. Oh. Yeah. Every angle you look at it, you're like, this is just impeccable. That's beautiful. Yeah, you've nailed it. Like, so, I like seriously, yeah. But I would hate to be, uh, at the same time, as a creative person, I would hate to have that pushed on. I'd like to have that recognition myself to be like, oh, I did it. Yeah. Now what do I do? Shit. Yeah. I feel like I'm always chasing that. Thing. Like our album, Foiled. Mm. Thank God that was about suicidal Justin. Yeah, because I just go. I don't want to write that shit no more. So you can you can separate it. It that. sold three million records. Yeah, but that was during the time of goth. Everybody was emo and sad. Mm -hmm. Life needs to be positive now. Yeah. I'd rather sell one hundred twenty thousand records and and do it our way and have a beautiful time doing it. You know, that's, that's the solution. Yeah. Uh, when can people see this one man show again? Um, 2020? It'll, uh, uh, 2020, February 2020. It'll be coming back around. Love it. I'll bring it here just so you can come see it. Bring, there are three rooms here. There's I know. other venues in town. Let's do I'm going to do the big room, bro. <laughs> One man show, big room. I think you can do it. Then I'm going to make you laugh, and then I'm going to fuck you up, and you're going to cry. I love it. And then we're going to do an interview backstage, okay? Yeah, or well, yeah, wherever you are, I'm I'm down. You can come Thanks. to the apartment and look at the building. There too. you go. The floor to ceiling windows. You can check it out. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank right. you. Yep. Thank you, man.